morning and God bless you. I trust and hope that you weren't affected by the COVID-19. But for all those who have been, uh, actually one of my daughters got a light case of it uh, because she's had some serious surgery and uh, taking meds and things, I think, uh, we believe weakened her immune system just a little bit. She had a very light case, but she was in the hospital because of the surgery and that combined. But I want to pray for everyone who's been touched by COVID. Lord, we just pray for health and healing restored to the people, Father God, and that COVID does diminish, retract, and be contained and uh, neutralized. And we thank you now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, it's good to be with you. And um, I want to talk to you just a moment about kindness. Kindness is so important. Being with people and having courtesy and uh, not reacting and throwing your hands up or saying words that shouldn't be said. And um, for ex well, and I've been catapulted into the new age, uh, the modern era. My, uh, this is something, this is just a tiny example. I asked my husband to get my Bible. I have a, a travel Bible that I use all the time when I travel, and I have a bigger, heavier Bible by my, my reading chair. And I asked him if he would get my Bible out of my car, where I keep it, the travel Bible which you've seen many times has a flowered, you know, cover on it. And uh, when we arrived here, or maybe on the way down, he had been distracted. So little things like, and so um, Frank or his son Leon here loaned me their computer. And so here I am, I'm, I look very uh, up to date. <laughs> and it was circumstances and grace and kindness and generosity that uh, has me here with the, with a, a modern, a leap into the modern world. And you know, there have been a lot of changes around us in these last couple of years and in even this year with the virus and such and the lockdown. So we were having reruns on the um, public access television there for a while and it's good to be back, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy having something new today. So, uh, but I want to talk about kindness and just being courteous, just like uh, Leon going upstairs and getting, or it was Frank, I believe, who's the director, um, brought in his computer so I could see the, have a Bible. I do have a little one on my phone, but it's kind of tiny. So, but the kindness, we need to help each other. We all only have one life to live here on earth. And then we're going, there aren't a lot of choices on where we're going. And that's why we talk to you about Jesus, or I talk to you about Jesus, because he is the Lord. And he did come to earth as a man. God knew all this would happen before he created Adam and Eve, and he was speaking. If you've ever wondered, which I did when I was younger, in reading Genesis where God said, let us make man in our image. And uh, I didn't know who the, the us was that he was talking about. But then as you continue to read, you, you, and as you grow and mature in the Lord, you find out that was the Jesus. There's God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit and they were talking themselves, and they knew that Adam would sin, that Eve would be deceived and Adam would sin, but they made us anyway because they wanted us. You know, the angels are not made in the image of God. We never see that anywhere in, in the Bible. Uh, they, were, they are sent forth to minister to us. We're the only ones in creation, I believe, uh, if you're just going by the Bible, which I am, who were created in the image of God. Yes, angels have arms and hands. They also have wings, which is very nice to be able to fly. But God wanted children. And, uh, 
in his image, and he made mankind. And he knew that Adam, that Eve would be deceived. Well, Satan had been cast out by then. In fact, I've sometimes wondered if earth was not Satan's domain, uh, you know, before the fall of man. And because it said that the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and without form. And uh, you know, God could have created it with a, a few words with the trees and birds and animals and those things, even mankind. He could have created with his word, but he chose. Something happened, I believe, that's just my personal opinion, that the earth became void and without form. And I think there is a, a school of thought where it says, and multiply and replenish the earth. Replenish means to redo. And so, uh, who knows? Um, I've sometimes thought maybe, well, I won't even express it because it's just my thought. But here we are. So the Spirit of God moved upon the waters and then he said, let us make man. Well, he said, let there be light before that. So it was just a void or nothing. So anyway, God designed us. He wanted us here. He planned us. And we are made in his image. So I'm going to read chapter uh, 9 to you, starting at, uh, at verse 9. Matthew 9, verse 9. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. Now you know that the Jews did not like the tax collectors. They collected taxes for Rome, you know. And uh, I guess their, uh, their reputation was that they collected more than was due to Rome and just pocketed it themselves. So tax collectors were, I guess I could say, despised, looked down upon. Uh, probably were not invited to very many homes, if any, except other tax collectors. So um, here we are. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Can you imagine how wonderful that was to Matthew. I'm sure he'd heard of Jesus. He may have even seen some of the miracles before. And I believe he had such a longing in his heart to see Jesus up close, but there were crowds of people who thronged around Jesus. And there he was at the, sitting at the, his seat at the tax office, which may have been down on the ground, I don't know, you know, on a little low stool or something. And he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Jesus knows the secret desires of our hearts. And uh, he discerns them. And precious Holy Spirit does too. So now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in his house, or in the house, and behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, I guess it was at, uh, at Matthew's house, the tax collector, and uh, because it said many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. That's awesome. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Well, we're all sinners saved by grace, and that was part of the plan that God knew that would be, be needed. There was no way that we could get into heaven on our own. You know, we've, we've all sinned, um, varied degrees, but a sin is sin, and we all have self-will, and that's something the Holy Spirit is working on and the Word of God, reading it and everything, studying. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the ta table in the house that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. I believe uh, the people who normally followed him in the crowds, just the regular people, they, they didn't feel comfortable maybe going into uh, 
Matthew's house, a tax collector. And so I think they stopped at the door, but sinners went in. And, uh, and tax collectors and other tax collectors. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You know, sometimes it takes well, it takes time to understand the sayings of Jesus. Usually I have have read or heard, I've read in Kenneth Sade's book, and he uh, went to heaven. Well, he died and then the Lord sent him back. But the, he said that every word that God wrote has seven layers of meanings. Now I know when I was a child, I thought as a child, I talked as a child, and uh, there are certain things you do, and you can learn the Word of God, like, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. But as you grow and mature, there are other things that are revealed to you. For as you've done it unto one of the least of these, we've done it unto Jesus. There's seven layers to each word that was inspired by God. Hallelujah. So uh, when Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician. So they were, the Pharisees were judging them. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? These were the people, could have been prostitutes, could have been uh, people who had been thieves or uh, any number of things. And when Jesus heard that, he said to them, to the Pharisees, those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. Now this applies in the natural. That's well, someone who's well doesn't need a physician, but someone who's sick does. And thank God that he gave this skill, this talent or ability to certain people that they, they desire to be physicians, doctors, or scientists, and study diseases. And uh, of course, he also put anointings for being a teacher, a school teacher, a Bible teacher, um, a fireman. You know, sometimes they're little boys and they just want to be a fireman or a policeman or something. And uh, my son, Tori, at seven years old, he and his dad, family vacation, visited the, the uh, Air Force Academy up in Colorado Springs. And he and they, he just, just came into his heart at seven years old that he wanted to go to the Air Force Academy. So he and Ed prayed by the Falcon. Uh, I was on a, on a, I stayed home because the two little ones, you know, they were young and I thought, you know, I actually want a vacation. So I stayed home. And so he took the two kids and went and visited one of our older daughters who had married and went over to Iowa and met his family. Mark and Lori were visiting there on leave from the Air, from the Air Force. Anyway, um, so the Pharisee had said, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I declare, desire mercy and not sacrifice. I think many of the uh, Jewish leaders, Pharisees, almost felt they were, maybe they felt a little bit that they deserved to be in their favored positions and uh, to be have people maybe kiss the hem of their robe or try to touch the hem of their robe and uh, to receive all these things. And so... When Jesus said this, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and they gave big amounts. We know this from when Jesus went over and stood by the treasury to watch what the people were giving, and a little widow woman came and put in two mites. I think that's like about half a penny in today's value of money. And she t put it in, and then these uh, Pharisees and others came, and they just, maybe a few tax collectors, put in large amounts of money. 
but Jesus said that uh, she had put in more than they did because she put in everything she had, but they gave out of their abundance. And so when they were probably proud of what they were able to give, and what they gave, they still had a lot left over. And so when Jesus said this, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, he's teaching us to be kind for people. Making a big sacrifice and doing something uh, for show or so that, you know, the Pharisees, some of them actually hired someone to go before them as they went down the street, as they were giving their alms and to blow a trumpet so people would see how much they put in. And so, gee, and then they may have scorned the little widow's might. That's where that phrase comes from. You know, there's so many phrases in our culture that come from the Bible. And I think a lot of people don't, don't know it. And uh, so pray that a new, anoint, a new desire upon the population of, of America will come to read the Bible. And I believe it's happening. Of course, I think it's happening both ways. The, um, the righteous are getting more righteous. This actually says that in the word and the, and the wicked are becoming more wicked. But hunger. We can't sit on the, the fence or, you know, on the, the middle road. We, we're we going to have to take a stand one way or another for Jesus, and he wants us. He wants you to follow him. So here it is. And so um, so Jesus said, the, why, why do your disciples eat? Because they fasted a lot. And Jesus said, can the friends of the bridegroom mourn? as long as the bridegroom is with them. And the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. He was foretelling that he himself would only be there uh, for a brief period of time, and then he would be going back up to heaven, and then they will fast. And he says, no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Well, that's true. If you've ever in uh, maybe in ignorance, I don't know if I ever did, try to uh, sew on a, a thin piece of material onto a heavier piece of material, and it, it just tears, it doesn't work. So uh, the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse, nor do they put new wine into old wine skins, or else the wine skins break, the wine is spilled, and the wine skins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wine skins and both are reserved. Here he's talking about the law of Moses had been there for several, really, I think by around 4,000 years. And I'm not certain on, on that. And, and now they were, Jesus was coming with new teachings. In fact, he said a number of times, it was said unto you of old, you know, love your, your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, he said, but, but Jesus said, love your, your neighbor and as yourself and love your enemy too. So these were new thoughts. This was for people who were reared in that other mindset that you could hate your enemy and it was okay. Now this was trying to put new wine into them, a new understanding. So, uh, and uh, some people couldn't couldn't take it, you know. They couldn't they couldn't open up to it. I've read that whenever revival comes to a, a nation or an area, that in America there there were people who were saved in a revival, and then years later maybe another revival came through someone else, and some of those could not receive the new the new teaching. They stuck with what they had learned then. They, they were like old wineskins that had hardened, and they couldn't receive new things. And, but there were those, and especially younger generations, but there are older people too who are open to new things. Believe me, we don't know everything God does. He does a lot of things, and I don't judge experiences people have, and they say it happened with God. I don't touch it because... God does a lot of things I don't know about, and 
if uh, it's just wonderful to leave those things. I don't criticize it, but I, and especially when they're healed, and it's that's like proof that it there was a, a heavenly touch. It was in the name of Jesus. They put new wine into new wine skins, and both are preserved. And a girl was restored to life, and that's what we're going to read about. While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him. Praise the Lord that some, and it says that even a lot of the Pharisees believed on him. This is in the book of Luke. Believe, but they didn't confess him because they were afraid of the other Pharisees, because they desired the praise of man more than the praise of God. So don't let that happen to you. When the Lord truly reveals something to you, I'm not saying you have to go out and start proselyting, you know, teaching other people, but but I really believe God shows us things and shares things with us so that we will share it with other people to help them too. Because it says the uh, prophecy or scriptures of no private interpretation, even though things he restores, he reveals to us in our life, that's not really, uh, that's not written into the word, you know. But anyway, uh, he came and worshipped him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years came from behind and said, and came behind and touched the hem of his garment, for she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around. It says in another one of the uh, Gospels, he said he felt virtue or power go out of him. Hallelujah. And so he turned around to see who it was. Jesus turned around when he saw her. He said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. So this is one of the few times in the word that we see that Jesus Someone's faith drew upon the virtue or the power, the purity, the authority in Jesus, and he didn't even know it. He was in his, his natural body then, even though all the gifts of the Holy Spirit were operating in him, word of knowledge and things. But this just illustrates sometimes your faith will, will reach out and take your healing. And sometimes it's someone has spoken that through a television program or something. But, and the woman was made well that day. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the nosy, noisy crowd wailing, they actually would pay professional mourners or weepers, women, to come when someone died in their household, to come and you know, beat their, their, uh, their breast and cry and wail and maybe they screamed, I don't know, but they, they hired them to come. So, and he saw flute players and a noisy crowd wailing. He said to them, make room. The woman is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. I think the old King James says they laughed him to scorn. They they did not believe it. And many of them had probably seen miracles, but they didn't believe he could raise the dead. And, um, but I'm not saying that those are the ones that, that, were, that ridiculed him. But when the crowd was put outside, so they'd actually gone into the house, some of them, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose, and the report of this went out into all that land. And you know, there's something else I noticed. I'm wonder, I don't know if it's in John or in Luke, that before that, it never said that people touched Jesus' garment to be healed. But after this, and that story got noticed that she touched the hem of his garment, you see it, later when he went places, people just thronged him to touch his garment. So she opened up a whole new dimension of faith. Isn't that awesome? She did it. She drew upon the power, the virtue, the authority, the kindness of, of the Lord. And, uh, but she was the first one who did it. And she was memorialized in the scripture. Oh, hallelujah. And, uh, 
And Jesus said, make room for the make room for the girls not dead but sleeping and they ridiculed him but when the crowd was put outside he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose and the report of this went out into all the land and but after this woman did that if you read in the gospels in Luke I think it is and it might be John because John was very close to the Lord and really observed things also people thronged him to touch his garment so she entered, uh, introduced a new dimension of faith. That is awesome. And I just pray that each of us can experience a faith that will encourage other people. There were many others who needed to be healed. And Jesus healed Benny. He laid his hand on them like the little girl. He, uh, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. Sometimes he touched blind people. Sometimes he spoke a word, but no one had just reached out to the hem of Jesus' garment to receive their healing. Hallelujah. So I just pray that you and I will, uh, through the word of God, will find new truths that help people, that encourage people, and that our faith will grow, not just ours, but other people around us. You know, people need to see faith. They need to see people doing things of faith, you know, like maybe uh, I've heard of others who visualized a building the Lord told them to, to build, and they, they saw it in, the, this, in their spirit, in their, their mind's eye, and no matter how much people ridiculed or mocked, of course some people believe, it happened. God gave them that. I want to ask you now to receive Jesus as your Savior. And it's very simple. God has made it as simple as it can be. Even a child can receive the Lord as Savior. And uh, pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God, that you came and died for me and all of mankind. I am a sinner, Lord, and I've I'm so sorry. I ask you to forgive me, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior and my Master. Hallelujah. And I pray in your name, because Jesus said on the, on the night of the Last Supper, he said, before this you have not ask anything in my name, but now, they had Jesus right there with him, but now ask the Father, in my name, and he'll give it to you. He'll do it for you. So read your Bible. In fact, why don't you read uh, Matthew chapter 9? It's a great chapter. I started in verse 19, but you can learn a lot, and the Holy Spirit will enlighten things to you. And especially, and don't be in a big rush. Just read from 19 to the end of the chapter even. But don't be in a big rush to see how much you can read. Don't put a burden on yourself that you have to read a bird a chapter a day. I used to read uh, 10 chapters a day for, for years, and I loved it. I read five of the Psalms, a chapter in Proverbs, a consecutive chapter in Proverbs, like the day today is the 22nd, I would have read Proverbs 22nd, and then I would read uh, four verses, four chapters in the New Testament. But don't put a burden like that on yourself. Love the Lord and praise Him and pray to Him. God bless you. I'll see you next month.